What's up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create these really fun text effects in an easy way in Webflow. So be sure to like, uh, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with new videos. And in the comments below, let me know your idea for the next YouTube tutorial. So I'm going to leave in the description of this video the code that we're going to use. And we can just copy that code and head over to our Webflow page where we want to add the animation. And then in the pages settings, underneath the closing body tag, we can paste in our custom code. And then there's a bunch of different animations that we can use. You can customize these to your liking. Uh, you can duplicate them to add new animations if you want to apply it to different uh, text. But you'll see there's the slide in animation, slide up, there's a fade up, um, there's a pop in, there's a bunch of different ones. So the way that it knows to apply a particular animation is it looks for this class of fade dash up. So we need to add that, not including the period, um, as a class name to whatever we want to animate. So by doing that, it knows that we want to apply the fade up animation, but there's one more step. Each one of these letters has to be broken up into a span, so that way they can be uh, slid in one after the other. Um, so for that to happen, we had to add another class, a combo class of tricks. And uh, by adding that class, it's going to break um, all these up. So you need the animation name and you also need this class for this to work. And once we hit publish, uh, we can sort of just preview on the live site what this is going to look like. So once we load it up, you'll see it, uh, each letter kind of slid in one after the other and then it slides out. So um, it did kind of put that all in one line. So what we may need to do is duplicate this and we may need to actually take out this line on this one, take out that line on that one to kind of force it. Uh, and it's still gonna fade up this line first then this line second. Um, so it'll still work that way. So once we publish, we should be able to test this out and see what it's gonna look like. All right, so on the live site, we refresh, slides up, yep, one after the other, and then it slides out. So that's perfect. Um, now, if for some reason you wanted this to loop, all we would have to do is go to whatever animation we're using. And in this case, it is the uh, fade up animation. And then right here under where we first call it, we need to change loop from false to true. And uh, then once we save this and publish again, and then once we load up the page, it should just start looping. Um, it should just keep going through it. So it fades up and then it should fade out, fade up again, fade out again. So that's definitely an option. Um, maybe if you didn't want it to loop and you just wanted it to play once, what we could do is under this fade up animation, we could set loop back to false. And then you'll see in this first set where it says add is that's where it's targeting each letter and making it fade up one by one. And then the second add is where it makes them all fade out. Um, so what we could do is start right here on this line. We'd, we would need to leave this last piece of code in, but on this line here, all the way up to the line that says add, we just delete all that. And then this will just make it only fade up and then it won't fade back out. So on the live site, uh, once we go ahead and publish, we can come over here and refresh. So now it fades up and then it won't fade back out. The text will just stay in view. So you can do that for any one of these animations. Uh, say I wanted to reuse this fade up animation in another place. Um, like maybe I wanted this text to also fade up. Uh, I can't use this exact same fade up class because it's going to count it all as one animation and it'll wait till these th two lines have animated before it animates this one. So what I could do instead is um, I would have to duplicate the whole fade up animation and that is right. So it starts right here and then it ends right there. Uh, you can look up this uh, in the comment where it says fade up. That's what we'd need to copy. So I can copy that. I can create a new line and I can call it fade up animation two. And then I'll just replace everywhere that says fade up this variable with fade up two, fade up two, even the class name will need a change to fade up two. Um, and then where we play it, which is down here towards the bottom, 
these are all the things that actually play the animation. So we have one called Fade Up. I'm just going to copy that one and then make Fade Up 2, and that will play it. And we'll hit Save. So then this one, again, is going to need the class of Fade Up 2 this time. So Fade Dash Up 2. And then it'll need the class of Tricks to split it all up. So now when we publish this, it should animate uh, both of those for us. So let's see. Refresh. Yep. And they're all fading up. So it is kind of funny how it's like sliding. Uh, you can see the text. It's running into the text underneath it. So one thing we could do is actually set the overflow to hidden on any one of these. Like if we set the overflow to hidden, then it's going to kind of create like a whole new look. Um, so it'll actually just crop the letters outside of this box and it'll make them slide into the box. So we're not going to get that overlap effect. And you can do that with any one of these text animations that I have in here. So you see it kind of just crops. Yep, just crops it just like that. So that looks pretty good. Um, there's a lot of ways we can play the animation. So we don't have to make the animation only play when we load the page. Um, there's a lot of different things we can do. And um, so we can, first of all, we can delay the animation so it doesn't start right away. So like this fade up to animation down at the bottom, we just create it. I can copy that play, delete it from here, and then I can put it inside this timeout thing. So it says, wait before playing your animation, put the play below this line. So I'm going to create a new line below this line, and I'll make it wait to play fade up to, and it's going to wait 800. But I can adjust like if I want it to wait 1,000, or how long do you want it to wait before it starts uh, playing that animation. So now if we publish, and we go back to the live site, we should see this headline will play instantly, but this one will wait a little bit before it plays, just like that, yep. And we may need to set its opacity to zero initially, or do something to where we're not seeing it, but it is delaying like we would expect, so that is looking pretty good. Another thing we could do is make it to where any time we hover over something, it plays in the animation. So like say any time we hover over the hero message uh, class right here, we would want to play this fade up animation inside. So what we could do for that is there's a separate trigger. And that is if down here, um, I have one for play animation when hovered in. So this is class is the class of the thing you want to hover over. So in this case, it's my see hero message. Then all I had to do is remove this fade up play from here. And then I'll just put it under the see hero message line here. So whenever I hover over see hero message, it'll play our fade up to animation. So I'm just going to go ahead and publish this and we can test it out. So back on the live site, uh, this plays instantly like we would expect. But now whenever I hover over this card, this animation plays just like I would expect. So that's looking great. One other thing we could do is on click. So I could make it to where any time I click on that card instead, uh, we would it would play that animation. And to do that, I would just change uh, this C hero message. Uh, this class needs to be on the click class up here. And then you can duplicate these. So you could copy this whole block if you want it to have multiple click animations and just use a different class for the second one if you'd like. But um, we can make it to where whenever we click on this, it plays the animation instead of hover based. So we'll go ahead and test that one out too. Um, so you can have on page load, on mouse hover over an element, or I'm going to go ahead and click and it slides up. The last one that we can have is whenever we scroll into view of an element. So like, let's say that um, maybe this heading here, I would want it to animate once it scrolls into view. So for this one, we're going to need a container actually around the um, heading that we plan to animate. So I'm going to drag in a div block and I'm going to wrap it in here. And then it's going to need a class. Um, so I mean, it's going to need an ID. So we can call it a text container for our ID. And then basically what that's going to do is say whenever it scrolls into view, this div scrolls into view text container, play an animation. So for the animation, let's try a different one. There's a bunch of them we could try. 
um, let it, let's uh, do the, um, let's do pop-in. So we'll do the pop-in animation. So we'll grab this pop-in and um, we'll go over to this when scrolled into view. And then, so we'll put it under this line. We'll play the pop-in when we scroll into view of the text container ID, I believe is what we called it. Um, so let's save that. And let me just make sure this was text container. Yep, perfect. So then for this, we're just gonna need it to give it that class of um, pop-in. And then um, for here, we also need to give it the class of tricks so it knows to split up the letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and publish that and we can test it out. So back on the site, on the live site, this fades in instantly. This fades in once I click. I can scroll down and then this one won't play till I, yep, right there, till I scrolled into view. I can refresh to test it again. I scroll into view and it plays. So um, that's everything for creating these text animations. I hope you've enjoyed this video.